inquiry in aid of legislation of the committees on trade, commerce, and entrepreneurship, local government, public works, ways and means, and finance is hereby called to order. At this point, let me acknowledge the presence of the following committee members. Uh, Senator Jaime Marcos, thank you. Uh, with uh, with uh, the senators present, I declare the presence of a quorum. Uh, at this point, may I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending today. Good morning, everyone. For our public hearing and inquiry of legislation for this morning, we have the following resource persons attending physically. We have uh, from the DTI, Undersecretary Blesila Lantayona. We also have uh, Ms. Irene Del Mundo Malolos. Uh, we also have ASEC. Mer Mary Jean Pacheco, uh, DTI Liaison Office, we have Attorney Marco Maat, Francis Sune, Irene Forcadilla, and we also have Undersecretary Ruth Castello. From the Department of Labor Employment, we have Jerome Lucas. And for those attending virtually, we have uh, the following guests. From the PIDS, we have uh, Ramonet Serafica. We have Attorney Oliver Xavier Reyes from the University of the Philippines Law Center. From uh, U.S. Asian Business Council, we have Mr. Earl Harry Bea. From Lazada eServices Philippines Incorporated, we have Mr. Raymond Alimorong, Attorney Kyla Garcia, and Norman Ocaña III. From uh, the Quartz, we have Mr. Rome. Uh, Espino. From uh, Zalora, we have uh, Miss Susie from Stroller. From Citizen Watch Philippines, we have Leandro Salud. From Shopee, we have Attorney uh, Jamie Hans Segovia. From the Philippine Retailers Association, we have Attorney Paul Santos. From Ancas, we have uh, Rod Ross Ramirez and Miss Jillian Grace Soto. From Lalamu, we, also, we have Attorney Zoe Caneba. From Food Panda, uh, we have uh, today Miss uh, Miss Andy Imperial. From JFCC, we have uh, the Managing Director, Mr. Don Felbon. From SM, we have uh, Miss Elin Go. From Facebook, we have Claire Amador. From Google, we have uh, Carlos Santiago. From Imagine Law, we have the project manager, Michael Lawrence Millian. From Secure Connections, we have the following, Grace Mirandilia Santos, Dr. William Yu, Miss Cristina Batalia, Mr. Dan Carlos Mejes. For the One Town, One uh, Product Program Philippines, we have Mr. We Bohol, Miss We Bohol. From Food and Drug Authority, we have Ana Trinidad Rivera, uh, Rubilin Garcia, and Antonio Martinez. We also have uh, of the same agency, Olivia uh, Lorenana and Ophelin Cabrido. From the CDA, Cooperative Development Authority, we have uh, Undersecretary Joseph Encabo. From uh, TESDA, we have Ms. Beverly Bayonisto and Lourdes Castante. From the Department of Agriculture, we have uh, Undersecretary Christine Evangelista and Ms. Imelda Rida. From the Department of Tourism, we have Attorney Glyza Sarmiento, Ms. Rebecca Rutzel Austria, Attorney Janice Bell Buzon, and Engineer Amelita Saganda. From the Department of Finance, we have Ms. Jean Ginto. From the Department of Labor and Employment, Ms. Pia De Jesus. And for Senate Resolution Number 169, we have the res following resource persons from uh, Trade Industry Development Specialist, uh, Carla Tricia Santos. And uh, from DTI, Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines, we have Doris Gatso. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Soraya de Guzman and Glenn Polo. And from PCA, Philippine Con Constructors Association Incorporated, uh, co Incorporated, we have Ronaldo Elipano Jr., Mr. Leo Valera, and Ms. Barry Paulino. That's all, Mr. Chair. 
Yes, thank you. And I'd also like to, uh, to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator uh, Ronald De La Rosa. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge his presence online. Hello. And uh, for today's hearing, the committee joint with the committees on local government, ways and means in finance will discuss the following legislative measures on Internet Transaction Act and One Town, One Product Philippines program. For the Internet Transaction Act, we have uh, Senate Bill Number 154, filed by Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Senate Bill Number 612, filed by Senator Juan Miguel Subiri. Senator, uh, Senate Bill 806, filed by Senator Jingoy Estrada. Senate Bill Number 1125, filed by Senator Mark Villar, yours truly. And uh, Senate Bill Number 1250, filed by Senator Amy Marcos. For the one time one product Philippines program, we have Senate Bill Number 247, filed by Senator Lauren Legarda. Senate Bill Number 260, filed by Senator Ramon Revilla Jr. Senate Bill Number 286, filed by Senator Jingo Estrada. Senate Bill Number 424, filed by Senator Christopher Lawrence Go. Senate Bill Number 946, filed by Senator Sherwin Gachayan. And Senate Bill Number 1246, filed by uh, yours truly again, Senator. Uh, Right after the public hearing on the measures, the Committee on Trade and Commerce and Entrepreneurship, joined with the Committee on Public Works, will conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on resolution number 169, directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation as to the increase in the price of construction materials that affect the timely implementation of government infrastructure projects. Uh, please allow me to make a specific house rules to ensure the orderly and efficient of the hearing. Can Committee Secretary inform today's attendees of our House rules? Thank you, Mr. Chair. For everyone, kindly mute your microphone if you are not recognized or do not wish to be recognized. Since the visuals of the online meeting are limited, please inform the chairperson of your inquiry by specif specifying your name before stating your concern, comment, and position. All data that the resource persons who wish to present Relative to the subject today, may be submitted to the committee secretariat for the consideration of this body. At this juncture, at this juncture please accept my heartfelt gratitude to all of you. Uh, thank you for attending this committee, this hearing, and assisting us in deeply understanding the topics that will be discussed this morning. Before we proceed with the hearing proper, may I ask uh, the other senators present at this hearing if they have any opening statements prior to our discussion. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Please proceed, uh, Senator. Yes, the uh, 18th Congress uh, disqu discussed this uh, bills quite thoroughly regarding the internet and e-business transactions. And uh, we have uh, um, already established as early as 2009, 13 years ago, the DTI e-commerce unit, um, which we would like to hear a report about. How is it going? Uh, what are the problems that you face, considering that in 2009, um, the quantum of e-commerce transactions was so small, and it's just blown up. Um, we also know that the 2020 report of both Lazada, Shopee, and others um, posted a volume of consumer complaints three to five times larger than 2019, obviously, because the transactions also multiplied um, similarly. Further, um, the uh, contentious clause in the previous debates in the last Congress surrounded the issue of joint and solidarity liability, which would add additional and significant costs to e-commerce. So uh, the uh, responsibility, therefore, for several FDA banned beauty, skincare, health, and food products remained in limbo if we cannot uh, resolve the responsible parties. This is important to us and to consumer protection. So I think these are the things that we need to address at the same time, of course, for my bill in um, SBN 1250, I added a three-year reprieve from taxes for small e-businesses that are starting up simply because in many, many cases, uh, fresh graduates during the COVID period, as well as um, housewives and others seeking uh, uh, additional income in this ailing economy, um, 
look to e-commerce as the only uh, potential source of additional income for their families. So, para sa maliliit, yun lang talaga na ang pag-asa at yan ang pinagtutuunan nila um, ng uh, pansin at trabaho. Kaya uh, nais ko sana, eh, pahintulutan na lang sila na magtrabaho kahit pa paano at uh, bigyan ng konting insentibo. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. Thank you for your um, opening statement. Uh, let, let us now begin our discussion on the internet transaction measures. May I ask the committee secretary to discuss the rationale and objectives of the measures? Thank you, Mr. Chair. For everyone's kind information, the internet transaction bill is one of the 19 priority measures outlined by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. during his first State of the Nation address. In the last Congress, Senator Coco Pimentel, the previous chair of the committee, sponsored Senate Bill Number 2489 or the Internet Transactions Act of 2022 on the Senate floor. The substitute bill intends to safeguard customers and merchants who engage in online transactions by introducing stringent regulations in the e-commerce bureau. It aims to boost consumer and seller confidence in online transactions to promote the expansion of electronic commerce in the Philippines. Can the committee secretary confirm that there was already a previous report on this measure during the last Congress? Yes, Mr. Chair. So I presume you don't have to start from scratch because the proposed measure has been thoroughly discussed in the previous Congress and based on records, two public hearings on September 3, 2020 and October 1, 2020, and one technical working group meeting, which was uh, conducted in October 22, 2020, were already uh, conducted. Upon closer review, the five measures appear to be similar and have completely adopted provisions on the substitute of the substitute bill on internet transactions reported out in the last Congress, except with Senate Bill Number 1255 by Senator Amy uh, Senator Amy Marcos, the loan bill which includes an additional provision of a tax exemption of newly registered e-commerce e-commerce enterprises. Uh, notwithstanding, the proposed measures generally address the significant concerns and issues raised by the concerned stakeholders. Nonetheless, there may be additional items you believe should be included in the current version. So if you have any other further comments, recommendations, or issues with the current versions, please bring them to the attention of this committee. Your input and suggestions will be extremely helpful in improving the present measures. As of this time, seven position papers were already received upon request of the committee. If you have not yet submitted your position papers, we would appreciate it if you could do so as soon as possible, uh, unless you have other, uh, unless you have filed and maintained your position last Congress. Considering that other stakeholders have had already filed their position paper when this measure was heard in the 18th Congress, may I hear any motion from the other senators to adopt the inclusion of position papers received by the committee from the previous Congress as an integral an integral part of this hearing and be considered in drafting the committee report? Yes, uh, we hear with move uh, that uh, these uh, position papers, the seven already in receipt of the committee, as well as any uh, to be submitted later, be included in the committee report and in the consideration of the TWG. Thank you. The motion, the motion is carried. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, as DTI had already, had already presented their measures also in the last hearing of this committee, may we ask the DTI for, uh, for some uh, comments uh, relative to this measure? Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, um, and with permission, I'm joined by Yusek Ruth from the Consumer Protection Group. So um, we'll do a short part one, part two. Um, Mr. Chair, we thank the Senate Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship for tackling the proposed Internet Transactions Act, which is number six in the list of the legislative priorities mentioned by the President uh, during the SONA. Um, the DTI fully supports all of the measures filed by, by the Senators, um, um, as uh, mentioned earlier by, by the Committee Secretary. Um, Mr. Chair, Chair, um, as the supervising head of the e-commerce office, we are particularly grateful to the chair for SB 1125, creating the e-commerce bureau. At present, we are a team of 11 plantilla, and we believe that a stronger lean and mean unit such as an e-commerce bureau should be able to efficiently address e-commerce concerns, particularly on growing the sector through greater private sector engagement. Um, Mr. Chair, we are also particularly supportive of um, Senate Bill uh, 1250 by Senator Marcos, particularly Section 20, uh, Mr. Chair, 
providing for tax exemption for newly registered e-commerce um, enterprises. This is one of the advocacies of Secretary Pascual to encourage more enterprises to register and grow their business. Um, aside from the e-commerce bureau, Mr. Chair, we see the need for an online business registry, a trust mark, and a little bit of clarification on the re regulatory jurisdiction of DTI over digital platforms. We wish to manifest the position that DTI respects the mandates of other agencies. Hence, we propose that instead of a primary regulatory role, that the rule-making authority of the DTI shall be ancillary to any duly constituted regulatory jurisdiction granted to an agency by law. Um, the DTI defers the exercise of rule-making or regulatory power to regulatory agencies um, um, such as the BSP, um, um, the ICT, the DA, the FDA, the IPO, unless the agency declares uh, declines to exercise its jurisdiction without the without legitimate justification or will fail to exercise its jurisdiction within a timely manner. Um, as the Internet Transactions Act also cover consumer protection, may I therefore defer to our consumer protection under Secretary Yusek Caruth Castello. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, thank you, Asik Jean. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, the Honorable Senator Aimee. Uh, we express full support for the, uh, well, hopefully soon, enactment of the Internet Transactions Act, Mr. Chair. Uh, the DTI Consumer Protection Group has really been lobbying for this since the previous administration because it will intensify consumer protection uh, in the country. Currently, we only have the Consumer Act uh, of the Philippines that protects consumers even if the Online, even if e-commerce and online transactions are not mentioned. The Consumer Act does not make any distinction between a physical transaction and an online transaction. This is going to really be a big help uh, for us in consumer protection, especially the creation of the online business registry. Uh, the online business registry will contain information the uh, sellers engaged in retail, uh, in e-commerce, uh, internet retail, uh, so that it's going to be easier for us also in DTI to uh, take action on the requests. Uh, currently, Mr. Chair, without the Internet Transactions Act, we often have to seek the assistance of uh, uh, our law enforcement agencies on cybercrime uh, because there is no, uh, a lot of times there is no trace where the seller is after the transaction has been completed by the uh, between the seller and the buyer, and then the seller disappears. Um, we do not have so much um, uh, difficulties in managing online platforms because, well, we have to mention that they're also very cooperative with the DTI, and it's easier because they have physical presence also in the Philippines. And uh, the, I mentioned earlier the online business registry that is going to uh, help the consumer protection group. The takedown powers also of the DTI secretary is very important so that we can immediately take action if we know that there is a violation committed by any merchant or any platform. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, we express full support and we hope that this is going to be enacted in the very near future. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, please Sorry. proceed, Senator Marcos. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, in the past Congress, the debates um, centered around the dispute between uh, the digital platforms and uh, the DTI's consumer protection effort regarding the liability regime. If, in fact, the platform would be liable for the defective or banned products, um, that were being sold on their platform. Is there a compromise in the offing between DTI, Lazada, Shopee, and the rest? Have we determined what to do regarding liability on this? Sa haba ng pinag-usapan natin, may ending ba? Mr. Chair, uh, currently what the DTI Fair Trade Enforcement does is um, to someone or to call attention on the platforms because we have no uh, record of where the merchants are within the platform. So it's always uh, the platform that we hold liable, uh, Mr. Chair. Any, and, any word from the platforms here represented? Is that satisfactory? Because I take it from your position paper that you violently object to said the uh, liability uh, uh, regimes because they will add costs to your 
to your uh, sellers and this will be passed on to the consumers. Tama ba? Wala ba tayong compromise dyan? Meron bang maayos na uh, responsibilidad para dyan? Uh, are there any uh, platforms who would be uh, who would like to comment on the concerns uh, on 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 this concern brought up by Senator Marcos? Maybe we can uh, ask for uh, position papers na lang. Uh, the uh, platforms chairman I think cannot get away with uh, zero responsibility. But uh, does DTI have you uh, anything in mind so that we can reach a compromise and finally pass this bill? If you will, ASEC. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ma'am, in our conversations with the platform, I understand that the version of the House, um, which provides for limited liability and states certain conditions, are acceptable to the platforms. But I'd rather, Mr. Madam Chair, that uh, the platforms themselves will say that uh, on record. Um, are any of them represented this morning? They, I believe Shopee. Uh, yes, the, uh, the platforms present, uh, Comsec, can you please identify? Comsec? Kindly identify the platforms who are present in this uh, hearing and uh, maybe, I think some of them have their hands raised, maybe we can recognize. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, secondary liability was imposed upon the platforms. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think some of, yes. Yeah, secondary and limited liability. Yeah. With could Sir, be we have Lazada. Lazada would like to speak. <laughs> I will speak, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ali Moran uh, from Lasada. You are recognized. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Chairman Chairman Villar and Senator uh, Marcos, for the opportunity to uh, be a resource speaker here. Uh, to the question that is being raised on the compromise or the approach on liability, uh, we confirm, uh, uh, as with ASEC uh, Jean Pacheco, that there was a approach taken in the version in Congress where the approach was a more of a subsidiary liability uh, and a solidary liability under a specific set of circumstances, particularly involving uh, damage or loss to customer and awarding of civil damages. So it's a very uh, specific uh, scope on the liability as opposed to a blanket approach. Uh, our uh, on Lazada's part, our concern with the current solidary liability uh, language that we believe is in the version on the Senate bills today um, is that it uh, dramatically lessens the seller's responsibility and therefore emboldens potential wrongdoers as they will hide behind the platform uh, and therefore uh, will discourage enforcers from and will also discourage enforcers from pursuing the actual violator. Um, this also we feel creates an unnecessary differentiation between online and offline because today the mall is not solidarily liable for a violation of its tenant. Uh, the other concern we have aside from lessening seller responsibility under a solidarity liability blanket framework is that it will potentially create an unlimited liability on platforms. Uh, which will significantly increase platform cost, which will be then passed on to the MSMEs and the consumers. Uh, th thank you very much uh, for that, for uh, your comments on the bill. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Ali Morong, the uh, platforms have a list of their sellers, don't they? And uh, you uh, exercise some due diligence uh, with the sellers that you upload, don't you? Uh, that is correct, uh, Senator. Um, however, uh, it's still possible for a seller to do a unilateral action or that, is, uh, that will happen before the platform can prevent them from doing it. Uh, and we have a lot of mechanisms that prevent this. Uh, we have a lot of uh, AI uh, algorithms in the background that, uh, that track seller's behavior. We will take down when we see uh, patterns of behavior that are anti-consumer or uh, or fraudulent. Uh, however, it could still happen, no? and we feel yes. that, uh, yeah. The reason I'm asking is, uh, Ray, the reason I'm asking is because uh, there have been so many complaints. So what actions have been taken as far as DTI is concerned? Uh, there's been a lack of response from the platforms. Isn't that correct? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, the, the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau uh, always seeks the attention of the platforms in case of any complaint because um, resolution of the complaint will be up to them. Uh, right now, we have also uh, informed the, the sellers the, uh, about the laws that we are implementing and about what they should have in their platforms or what they should not have in the platforms. Um, unfortunately, there are still a lot of I, things I, to I'm Sorry to interrupt, but what's the grievance mechanism, Ray and uh, Yusek? Uh, what's the, the mechanism? Is the, there something that's very quick? I mean, without embarking on algorithms and AI from the very start in the back. Uh, and... Uh, pag may nagreklamo, what's the mechanism? Anong mangyayari? Why can't, can't we stipulate the process para maliwanag? Uh, the first step po, Madam, Madam Senator, would be for the uh, consumers to communicate with the platform. The, the big platforms that we have now also have this uh, mechanism. Oh, ng platform Mechani uh, It's the, it, the transaction po, if the transaction is done within the platform, so, uh, which are, of course, uh, inside, I, I mean, under the obligation also of the platform owner, uh, the consumers will have to communicate with the platform themselves uh, so that they, there can be uh, redress ah, of their complaints. The and, then, and then if, in case, it is eh, not reported. Ano 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 e ano 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 the, the complaint is not resolved by the platform. The consumer always goes to the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau and we directly to the platforms for resolution. So what does the e-commerce unit, what can you do uh, to uh, sanction, penalize, or at least inform the platform? Um, Madam Senator, um, the last... Are you happy with the... Uh, <laughs> are you happy with the response and the efficiency of this procedure? Uh, um, Madam Senator, um, in the, within the DTI, we have a Berlin Wall <laughs> that all consumer-related um, um, issues, <laughs> it, um, uh, the mechanism for regulatory is under the purview of the Consumer Protection Group. So we are the developmental partners of um, of the e-commerce. We provide the policies. The Teka, um, very, very simple lang yung tanong ko. Nagkaroon ng complaint. Okay? If I file sa'yo. Sasabihan mo yung platform. Sabi ng platform, manigas kayo. Moodle of the day yan. Bahala kayo sa buhay ninyo. Halimbawa, ganun. <laughs> Mga boss, oh, di bumagsak mo sa inyo, ASEC. What do you do next? So, um, what can you do to uh, reprimand or sanction or penalize the platform? Pwede ba? Senator, actually, this is the reason why you want the Internet Transactions Act to make um, to make the the um, the process more um, more um, stronger in this case but um, the way the current system now is when the when the dt when the complainant complains to the um, consumer Pro uh, protection group which is the fair trade enforcement bureau they uh, they have a process of um, um, mediation and then adjudication so this is the regular process that we have so um, um, madam chair when the internet transactions act is enacted into law the e-commerce bureau will sort of do a traffic and and monitor all of this consumer complaints, whether acted upon by the DTI, by the... So, halo-halo yung consumer complaints ninyo, whether e-business or regular transactions, halo-halo. Yeah. Eh, paraki pa yung e-commerce unit kung halo-halo naman yan. I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm saying that e-commerce, uh, by its speed, its efficiency, its... Um, overwhelming presence is different from an actual real transaction in a mall, as mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's uh, different, diba? So why are we treating it in the same way when, in fact, the Department of Trade already issued an order as early as March 2009, um, number 0916, na yun nga yung e-commerce kasi iba siya. Bakit tinatrato ninyo yung consumer complaints as pare-pareho? You are me. Um, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair, uh, the DTI has a no wrong door policy, so we, the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, accepts all kinds of consumer complaints. But no, I understand you do that. But di ba dapat yung e-commerce nakatutok sa e-commerce? Uh, we have only one unit of 11 people currently. And the but, same ASEC. So you are the ASEC for consumer, and you're also the ASEC. 
Ba't parang pareho lang kayo? Ay, ma'am, ano? Kasi sabi nyo, halo-halo rin at pare-pareho lang ang trato sa real yeah. and internet yeah. transaction. Um, you, um, Madam Senator, the policy of the DTI is not to distinguish um, an online transaction from an offline transaction. So if Why not? Oh, ma'am. So Why did we bother then to establish an e-commerce unit? What was the purpose of the e-commerce unit kung pare-pareho lang pala? So ma'am, the e-commerce unit is not only in terms of consumer protection, but it is also um, um, for the promotion of e-commerce sector. Um, on the development side of it, Mr. Mr. Chair and Madam Senator. So we'd like to grow. Uh, we'd like to grow more online merchants. How much money do you get a year? Ma the the e oh, it's budget season. Yes, ma'am. So it's a relevant ma question. Ma'am, the e-commerce e office gets 1.5 million pesos um, as a regular budget. And you also process the complaints. Uh, no, ma'am. All the consumer complaints are in under the purview of the consumer complaints. Uh, consumer Protection Group, Madam Chair. I see. Thank you, Madam yeah. Senator. Thank you. Look uh, for your support, Madam Chair, for e-commerce budget. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And maybe what what are the mechanics? Can I ask the um, our uh, e-commerce perhaps representatives? What are their, your mechanisms to address these uh, uh, customer concerns? Maybe you can enlighten us uh, on what your mechanisms are. Uh, is there any? Uh, can we ask uh, Mr. Uh, Alimurong from? Uh, I can see what he's raising. You're raising your hand. Uh, you're recognized, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Chairman Villar, uh, for the mechanisms. Me before I mention the mechanism, can I set some context on the volume of, of contacts and complaints? Um, to today, the customer contacts per order on Lazada is 0.3%. So if there is an order, 0.3% will actually contact us. Uh, and there is a 90% satisfaction rate. Now, if they cannot resolve it with us, and we will, I will, I will explain very briefly what those redress mechanisms are. It will be escalated potentially to the DTI. When the DTI receives an escalation, it is sent to us. Of the complaints that we receive from the DTI, they represent 0.001% of the orders on Lazada. So if I may repeat, so the, the direct contacts to Lazada are 0.3% of orders, and the escalations on the DTI are 0.001% of the orders. Uh, any escalation from the DTI is resolved by Lazada within 1.5 days with a 99.9% .9 resolution rate. Now, going back to the redress mechanisms on our platform itself, there is a seller-buyer chat so that the seller and the buyer have a chance to first resolve amongst themselves. If they cannot resolve amongst themselves, they can escalate. It automatically can escalate to Lazada, where we have a 24-7 support. Uh, in our support, we will refund in full uh, any sale where there is an issue, uh, where we have verified that it is a uh, valid issue. Uh, I'm, if, uh, if I may share with the body, there's also the possibility of a buyer being the scammer. So Lazada has to determine that it is actually the seller that is causing an issue and not the buyer, right? Um, but definitely we have a very powerful, ref a very strong, robust refund and return uh, mechanism. Uh, often we will not even ask for the item to be returned. We will refund uh, depending on the buyer profile without asking for a return. And we will refund the amount in full, whether they receive wrong item, uh, whether it's damaged upon receiving, uh, incomplete and things like that. Um, yes. So, and then aside from that, I mentioned earlier, uh, there will be escalation channel to the DTI. We will handle all those escalations. Average 1.5 days resolved, 99.9% .9 resolution rate. Uh, thank you. Uh, Asek, uh, you're here by recognition. Yes, um, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe I just wanted a little bit also some clarification on, on Senator Marcos when I report, when she asked me about the budget. Madam, uh, Madam uh, Senator, um, Senator Angara provided a budget um, 40 million. I just wanted Madam Chair to to uh, to mention that in 2020. So in 2020, we have a special uh, by the finance uh, chair that we were able to get that uh, budget for that particular year, Madam Chair. And and sometimes we ask um, some budget 
within the DTI. But but to what right. what is the forty million dedicated? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just in general to e-commerce, or was it specifically for so startups it, and so on? No, for the e-commerce roadmap, uh, Madam Chair, in the implementation of the roadmap. Implementation or the development of a roadmap. Um, the, um, the, the, the development of the roadmap, we, we, we ask a special provision from that within the DTI, but for that 40 million, Madam Chair, we did it for interventions such as um, our webinars, our training, um, um, we, 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 we have a digital skills project. Um, oh, I see. So, yun, so you so you 1.5 is the na. regular budget. Oh, that's the regular yeah. budget the regular under the DTI. It's a recurring correct. item. Yes, and then and then, uh, Madam Chair, when we when we we know that we are lacking in budget, we have a special request. Um, but you yes, know, but I think Senator Angaro is very generous. May 40 million kayo in this day and age. Huh? But that was long one year, Madam Senator. I hope that we'll do it again. Hopefully this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. Man. Uh, thank you very much. I, I've, uh, well, before we proceed, I'd also like to acknowledge the physical presence of the DOH and the FDA, Director Cecil Matienzo, Division Chief uh, Marie Victignon, Mr. Christian Arnau of the Food and Drug Administration, and Ms. Uh, Madeline Teresa Casimiro of the, the DOH. Um, I'd also like to, well, I, obviously we've already opened uh, the, the floor for um, for questions, so I'd, I'd like to continue this. Uh, if there are any clarificatory questions, um, but I'd also uh, I have a few questions myself that I'd like to clarify. Um, there are sort of in in the provisions about the powers of the DTI secretary, particularly the take down provision, um, uh, which which is uh, uh, something that uh, I, I would I would like to hear the comments of our. Um, our uh, internet, uh, well, our um, our internet uh, sales um, companies. I'd like to see if the, I'd like to see what their comments are regarding these additional powers that will be given to the uh, DTI secretary, in particular the take down provision. If they're found to be liable, or if they're found to be to violate uh, consumer provisions, so. Um, is but maybe the DTI you can enlighten us on these provisions. Perhaps you can enlighten on what your opinion is regarding this. Uh, uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair. So again, um, um, it, within the DTI, we have a distinction on the regulatory aspect of uh, consumer protection. So uh, I usually defer to uh, Usa Cruz um, for responses on consumer protection. But relative to the, uh, in response to, as a direct answer, Mr. Chair, this is one of the valued provisions of uh, the Internet Transactions Act, where it is very clear that the Department of Trade and Industry Secretary will have the power of a notice and takedown. This is immediate. As soon as we see that there is a violation um, on 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 uh, maybe the prohibited and regulated items, right away the Department of Trade and Industry can take action on that. Um, I don't believe we have that power as of this time, but um, once that provision is enacted into law, this I think will, um, as earlier said by me, um, Mr. Chair, this will be very helpful for the DTI. What is your current recourse now in the case of uh, if you find if there are any findings of any violations? What is your current recourse? Uh, we simply resolve the complaints, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have no power. Well, a lot of times with the big platforms, we communicate with them cordially and ask them to uh, take down the seller. But we are not sure if this is done, Mr. Chair, because of the lack of uh, authority on the part of DTI. Thank you. Can we ask the? Are there any from the from the selling platforms? Uh, maybe from the uh, the internet transaction platforms. Maybe we can ask for uh, uh, a comment. Uh, would anyone care to comment on on this uh, provision in the law? Mr. Chair from DRA, we have Paul Santos would like to be recognized. Yes, please. Uh, you are hereby recognized, Mr. Uh, Paul. Mr. Santos? Uh, Mr. Mr. Santos. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, looking, at, uh, looking at the provisions here of the powers of the DTI Secretary, 
to order uh, a take to immediate takedown of a website that infringes Philippine law regarding, for example, the sale of contraband items, uh, you would notice that the powers of the DTI, there, there are basically two levels of enforcement in this clause, like common in all of the bills. No? One of them is uh, when, the e when the proposed e-commerce bureau finds cause to recommend to the secretary of uh, the DTI to recommend that certain products sold by certain websites be closed or if the website itself uh, infringes on Philippine law to order uh, the takedown of the website itself. And uh, the, the second, uh, and the second uh, clause is given certain extraordinary circumstances, the DTI secretary himself may motu proprio order uh, the takedown of, uh, to, to, to order the takedown of these sites or to prevent certain products from being sold. Um, my concern here is that, for example, in the first instance, the in case that the bureau, the e the proposed e-commerce bureau, finds cause to recommend to the DTI secretary for action against a certain website or the products it sells, uh, there is uh, no clause. There is no clause in all of the bills that will require uh, the e-commerce bureau to to, uh, to request the alleged infringer to respond to uh, the complaint against it or the products it sells. Uh, so we have, I, I would suppose there would be a, a grave e a grave uh, due process issue in this respect. No. Second, uh, given the extraordinary power granted to uh, the DTI secretary to order the immediate uh, but provisional cost uh, takedown of either a website or product, um, we find that, for example, in the second in, 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 in the second clause of that power, which uh, the DTI secretary can issue an advisory uh, advising payment processors not to entertain or not to process payment transactions involving that website. Uh, this power can be, can be exercised in an overly broad manner because, for example, uh, if the infringing website only sells one, two, or maybe several infringing products that have been ordered taken down. But the advisory coming from the DTI secretary to payment processors not to process payments of any nature for any product sold by this, uh, by this website, uh, that would be uh, ruinous for the website concerned because internet uh, payment processing is the lifeblood of internet transactions. And if the website is only found potentially liable for selling one or two infringing products or or, or, or infringing products, yes. But payment processing, payment processing is suspended for all of its non-infringing products. Then that in, in itself is tantamount to ordering the entire website closed uh, until the uh, website owner gives sufficient reason uh, for or lifting said uh, takedown notice. And also, uh, there should be some mechanism where the website owner can obtain redress using administrative methods. Uh, when, for example, it is found that there is no basis in law for the issuance of a takedown, uh, regardless of who recommended it, whether it's the uh, e-commerce bureau or on the initiative of the uh, DTI secretary himself. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, are there any other, uh, would anyone else like to comment? Uh, um, is there anyone else who would like to make a statement from uh, either the stakeholders or from the DTI perhaps? Yes, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Take. Chair, uh, we appreciate the provisions on takedown and the issuance of a cease and desist order against uh, platforms or merchants or any individual person selling uh, goods that violate the law. There are a lot, Mr. Chair. There is, as mentioned by Attorney Santos, the infringement on intellectual property, the fake products, uh, regulated products as well that are not supp supposed to be sold online unless they have the license 
permit from other government agencies. So the immediate takedown, Mr. Chair, uh, we understand that in the drafts that we have, uh, the, there is a provision on notice of hearing, notice and hearing before the DTI can act on, or, or can take down any seller. Uh, also, the issuance of a cease and desist order would require notice and hearing as well. Uh, so we propose, Mr. Chair, that these two provisions be merged and uh, the, the issuance of a cease and desist order be made immediate on the part of the DTI so that we can hold any future transactions that are to be made by the airing uh, seller, Mr. Chair. Now, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. And let, let us uh, make sure we keep those uh, in, in mind. Yes. Uh, since it appears that the, um, there's still a lot of uh, there's still a lot of details that have to be threshed out in the bill, I'd like to propose uh, that we create a technical. We refer the bill right now to a technical working group so that we can uh, harmonize the various concerns that have been brought up today. So. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, may I volunteer that the ICT, who don't seem to be present today, to be part of the TWG? Maybe they can help us with the technical concerns and better understand the uh, digital platforms. Yes, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, Senator. I think we need some uh, some specialists in uh, information and communication technology to help us also navigate the, the technical aspect of this internet transactions bill. So I'd like to direct uh, the ComSec to please invite the DICT in the technical working group okay, Mr. Chair. so that they can be, uh, their comments can be taken into account as we thresh out uh, this bill. So at this point, I'd like to um, uh, if I entertain motions to uh, refer this bill to the uh, technical working group. Yes, with that, uh, may I move, Mr. Chair, that um, we... Uh, deal with all these bills and forward them to a technical working group in preparation for a committee report. Uh, thank you very, very much for that motion. Uh, if there are no objections, the motion is uh, hereby carried. And I'd like to uh, uh, move on from this uh, um, internet transactions. Well, thank you. Thank you. And we'd like to move on to the, um, the One Town, uh, One Product Philippines program. Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, before we proceed, may we respectfully request that those attending in person for the internet transaction bills quietly leave the room, and those attending virtually log out of this plat online platform. And we may would like to request those attending for the one town one part of Philippines to please stay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the uh, committee thanks all the stakeholders and all those who participated in this uh, hearing on the Internet Transactions Act. Uh, we thank you for your time and your contributions. Prime Minister. Yeah. Sir. Uh, we'll just uh, suspend the session briefly to uh, so everyone can, uh, those who need to clear the room can, uh, can clear the room and we can reorganize. So uh, session suspended.
The floor is now open for the hearing on the bills for the one town, one product Philippine measures. Uh, Senate bills numbers 28, 424, 247, 260, 946, and 1246. The bills which adopted the committee, which adopted by the committee, adopted the committee report of the committee of the 18th Congress collectively seek to institutionalize the one town, one product program of the DTI and encourage the growth of MSMEs in the country through the utilization of indigenous raw materials, local traditions and cultures across the country. Can the ComSec provide a brief, a brief background on this measure? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The one town, one product Philippines program is a key stimulus program for micro, small and medium sized enterprises designed by the government to foster inclusive local economic growth. The program enables localities and communities to determine, develop, support, and promote products or services that are rooted in their local culture, community resources, creativity, connection, and competitive advantage. According to the proposed measures, each LGU will have an auto program office that will direct, supervise, and administer the auto program on a local level in compliance with current laws, rules, and regulations. Thank you very much. Uh, may we now hear, I'd like to hear from the comments or presentations from our resource persons. We can start with the DTA. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the DTI support these bills that promote the institutionalization of, uh, of a program which contributes the employment generation, increased income, and inclusive growth. The program components of the One Town, One Product Bill adhere to the 2017-2022 MSME Development Plan's pillars that are critical in developing MSMEs that are resilient, sustainable, and innovative uh, MSMEs. So, Mr. Chair, we reiterate our support to these bills. Thank you very much. At the... Uh... Okay. Thank you. I just have a few questions. Um, the DTI, did you have, do you currently have a master list of the products, uh, the uh, best products in each province, region, municipality? Is that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. In fact, we contain this one in our magazines, yes. which I don't know if I've given to you. We have the Luzon, the Visayas, and the Mindanao um, versions of this, and. Uh, we have this one in the auto magazines that we have. So, for example, uh, in uh, Cavite, in Region 4A, Luzon, we have the coffee. Mm -hmm. And then in Iloilo, we have uh, the butterscotch and other uh, pastries. And then in Agusan del Sur, we have the beaded crafts and tribal costumes from the tribal women handicrafts. So we have the list um, of these uh, auto products, Mr. Chair. What do you see as the if with this bill? How do you how do you see the enhancement of the auto program of the DTI? What what specifically do you see will be enhanced by the passage of this bill? Yeah, with the institution of uh, the auto program, Mr. Chair, uh, we are now sure that uh, budget for this will really be allocated, and that uh, the programs are institutionalized, and that we have very very strong focus already on the towns and uh, the municipalities uh, um, uh, products uh, that are, some, some of them are even startup. So we need really to support, even if we have already um, MSMEs that are at this level, we need to increase the number of these MSMEs because we are so rich in raw materials and the skills of our people. We need to elevate them to a level that really can compete and sell competitive products. Uh, currently, what is the budgetary support being received by your program? Uh, the uh, one for, product? for this year, we have a budget of around uh, 90 million, uh, Mr. Chair. Nine zero, Nine zero. Nine zero. Around that much. And a bulk of these funds are used for what? I mean, what is the majority of the funds uh, utilized for? A product development, uh, training, um, assistance in packaging, even assistance in. Um, um, helping the MSMEs get their registrations with the FDA, the license, because they cannot, they really cannot expand their market if they don't have these registrations, uh, Mr. Chair. We also use the budget in the establishment of uh, auto hubs 
which is a physical store that will uh, sell the auto products, showcase and sell the auto products. And this um, auto hubs are fully located currently in some of the airports, um, also in the municipalities. And um, right now we're starting to um, negotiate uh, with the secretary of uh, with the secretary, the current secretary, with Ayala malls for free store, but a free space in the Ayala malls. But they, we have really to beef this up. You know the arrangement and the presentation, and we also have um, negotiated and in fact signed an MOA already with uh, the Shell. So in all of their stores, we have an auto corner. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. And how do you, in terms of the allocation of the budget, is it? Uh, um, do you do you allocate it per region, or do you just choose which, or the the department chooses which areas they feel are the most, um, I guess, the most in need of uh, budgetary support? Upfront, Mr. Chair, uh, the budgets are already regionalized, and um, it is really actually based on the needs uh, on the plans of each of. Uh, the regions. So um, the budgets uh, right from the beginning of the year, uh, it's already re uh, regionalized. Equally? Or is it, no, no. Or it depends on where you, you identify the priorities, yes. It depends on uh, priorities. I, I recently attended the uh, footwear expo for Marikina Footwear, and they were also talking about the support needed in order for them to reach the next level of manufacturing. Uh, I just, uh, just, uh, it just entered my mind. So maybe part of that, is, uh, that can be as one of the success stories because as we know, Marikina is very known for shoes. But then in order to compete uh, internationally, medyo kulang lang sa support. So maybe you can take note, note of that also. I just, they just recently had a summit, uh, a shoe exchange summit. And I think uh, we have good local manufacturers, but I think they just need a little uh, push to reach uh, the next level of, which is uh, export. Uh, so I, I just something that I, I remember, maybe the DTI can uh, um, take that into account. Yeah. Yes, sir. In fact, uh, it's not only under auto program that we help the shoe industry in Marikina, but also with our shared services facility program, we have already provided them with um, free equipment that would uh, help upgrade uh, the shoe uh, industry in Marikina. And um, with the help of um, Congressman Kimbo, um, there is already a start. We, we just inaugurated the incubator facility in Marikina, which is located in the site um, uh, site uh, facility of the DTI, the, the former Nasida office in DTI. That's good. And Marikina. what is your coordination with SP Corp? Uh, you know, one of the, the they mentioned to me one of their issues is also. Uh, difficulty in finding financing to upgrade their facilities uh, what 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 kind of coordination do you does the i mean do you have in terms of the one town one product and uh, uh, small business corp uh, sp corp for financing yeah sb corporation actually relies on the department of trade and industry for the msmes that they can uh, fund because if it comes from dti they are more or less sure that this um, msmes are um stable and have been assisted not only in terms of technical assistance but also in terms of entrepreneurial assistance, uh, training, etc. So our negotiation centers and our provincial offices are actually coordinating very closely with the offices of um, SB Corporation in the regions. So uh, we even promote their financing programs and help the MSMEs uh, uh, navigate the the um, the digital component of it because now SB Corporation has already uh, transitioned from physical application and etc to online. So there is already an online um, application and even the processing and the release of the loan. So our negotiation center, business counselors, and provincial office uh, um, office uh, personnel are helping the MSMEs navigate this. I think that's good, and I hope I hope that uh, with this bill also your coordination with uh, with other uh, sources of funding should be increased because a lot of these 
a lot of these what, what a lot of these uh, MSMEs and more often than even your medium scale, which are very which are quite big already, they need financing, and of course it's it's a little challenging for them to get that. I hope that maybe uh, coordination with uh, SB Corp can help make them make the transition into a product that's not just locally competitive but uh, internationally competitive. And I think I was citing example the shoe industry, which already has existing manufacturers that maybe just need a little push before they can become. Uh, uh, a supplier for international. I think that's the one of our end goals. There is to have uh, that kind of volume and scale for our local manufacturers. So you know that's something that I hope uh, you can look into as well. The DTI can help push uh, these industries that uh, you know. Even though we had a head start, they got left behind. I think they just need the capital in order to you know boost them. Uh, you know, give them that boost so they can invest in materials that will make them. And then of course you have to choose. I mean, there's certain industries where can compare where we can compete nationally uh inter sorry internationally so it's important that we identify these industries and maybe i can ask uh what are hopefully, um if i can ask if we can be furnished with perhaps if the detail has a list of these particular industries that you feel that we can compete with in in a in the international arena where we can produce a product that's uh competitive internationally, can we ask for the DTI to furnish this committee with a list of those things so that we can also, you know, we, we can also help uh, and see how we can create laws that would help finance uh, these businesses that really need it. And also, I'm also the chairman of the uh, committee on banks. Uh, I'm very interested to know how we can help industries make that jump into uh, in the international market. Uh, so I hope you can furnish us with that. We will uh, provide you with the list. Yes. Uh, are there any? If there are there any, is there any other uh, stakeholders, or uh, is there anyone else who would like to share their opinions regarding the uh, the one town one product uh, bill? Anyway. Thank you. Since it appears that all stakeholders uh, support the measures and without objection, and with the approval of my colleagues, I would like to uh, uh, adjourn the hearing of the one town, one product program measures. The committee will now prepare the draft committee report pending the issues to be addressed. So uh, we'll thank you very much for your time and uh, we appreciate your inputs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for your insightful comments on our autop legislative measures. Again, we kindly request that the resource persons attending the autop measures physically to leave the room silently, and that those attending virtually log out of our online platform. Likewise, may we request those who are also attending for the inquiry in aid of legislation on Senate Resolution Number One Six Nine to please stay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, session suspended.
now proceed with the inquiry of Senate Resolution Number 169, titled "Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation as to the Increase in Price of Construction Materials that Affects the Timely Implementation of Government Infrastructure Projects." Together with the committee is the Committee on Public Works, chaired by Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. This representation filed resolution number 169 on August 30, 2022, following the increased, increasing price of construction materials in the country, which is anticipated to continue through the rest of the year and possibly into 2023. This is allegedly due to a number of factors, including the ri rise of oil prices brought in by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. According to the Asian Institute of Management, increased demand for construction materials as a result of the country economy's reopening and resumption of economic op operations, along with the supply constraints, is driving up material prices. The price increase is expected to adversely impact numerous infrastructure projects, notably government infrastructure projects, which are seen to help the economy rebound from the economic impact on the ongoing COVID health crisis. If this persists, the national government may find it difficult to achieve its 30-year infrastructure development plan. Thus, it is essential that we conduct an inquiry on the issue and consider how Senate can assist the, assist the executive branch to devise the appropriate measures to avoid incurring delay in the implementation of infrastructure projects caused by the increase in price of construction materials. So at this point, uh, we'd like to call on the DPWH to share uh, uh, their comments uh, on this matter. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we, would, we would like to appreciate the... Uh uh the, the chair for giving us uh, the opportunity to become the resources speaker uh, to address the issue of the increase in price of the construction materials do we have the slide i will be presenting uh, three uh, issues here uh, we'll be presenting number one the data showing the increase in the prices of construction material Number two, the existing laws and issuances to address the increase in prices of construction materials. And the last is the what the DPWH initiatives to address the increase in the price of the construction materials. Next slide, please. So in this slide, uh, we can see uh, the comparison between the uh, comparative increases in the uh, prices of fuel and uh, uh, construction materials and the NCR region for the purpose of comparison with the uh, between the PWH and the PSA or the Philippine Statistics Authority. So from this, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, from this uh, data, we can see that uh, as the baseline, the fourth quarter of 2021 last year, uh, the first quarter, for example, for fuel, uh, we have a disparity between the prices of uh, you will in NCR between PSA and DPWH, we have we are 5.42 percent, while uh, PSA is 20 percent. And then right after the uh, war in uh, Ukraine, uh, there is uh, in the second quarter there is a uh, appreciable increase in the pure price of fuel and other materials. So we DPWH immediately uh, uh, adjusted its price in the uh, CMPD, the construction materials and price. Uh, data of the DPWH, which we are uh, done, done uh, every quarter, we adjusted it to 86.85% as against the PSA at that time, which is only 36.26%. So uh, by, the, by this quarter, sir, um, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, compared to the last quarter, the fourth quarter of 2021, we're already 100.65. So it means that we double the price of fuel. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, in comparison po, uh, ito rin po yung ating tiniscuss kanina with respect to the CMT, the PWH, and the PSA price index. Next slide, please. So, what are the uh, existing laws and issuances with regard to the issue of uh, the increase in price uh, of uh, construction materials and fuel? We have in the department DO number 60, series of 2017, which... Uh, it specifies the guidelines and procedures for all price escalation and extraordinary contract-related claims manual. So lahat po ng uh, contracts natin na uh, either locally funded or uh, foreign assisted, the procedure for the uh, uh, claim or uh, for price escalation is included in this department order number 60. With respect to the Republic Act 9184, the procurement law, uh, specifically, Rule 19 with the contract prices in warranties, 61, uh, Section 61.1 reads, 
For the given scope of work in the contract as awarded, all bid prices shall be considered as fixed prices and therefore not subject to price adjustment and escalation during contract implementation except under extraordinary circumstances and upon prior approval of the GPPB or when a treaty or international executive agreement expressly allows it pursuant to Section 4 of this IRR. Section 61.2. In cases where the cost of the awarded contract is affected by any applicable new laws, ordinances, regulations, or other acts of the government of the Philippines promulgated after the date of opening of bid, a contract price adjustment shall be made or appropriate relief shall be applied on a no-loss, no-gain basis. What are the department initiative with regard to the issue? We have Special Order Number 68 Series of 2022 signed by the then Secretary Roger Mercado. Its aim is to establish effective coordination with concerned personnel and ensure immediate resolution of various issues and concerns regarding price increase of construction materials in the market due to the price increase of fuel caused by the ongoing conflict in Europe and in line with the continuing efforts of the government to implement projects with the right cost. We have also Department Order Number 63, Series of 22, issued on April 29, 2022. It's, uh, it is uh, formulated in order to address the subject issues and concerns relative to the volatility of all construction materials prices, both by the abrupt increase in the prices of petroleum products due to the ongoing, conf ongoing conflict in Ukraine and Russia, and so as not to impede the implementation of projects provided hindrance shall be observed and undertaken by all parties. So dito po, uh, it is specified uh, all the, uh, uh, the conditions, for example, letter A projects for bidding, so ano po yung gagawin ng mga contractors natin, uh, projects already advertised but with pending submission of bids, so hindi pa siya nabibid, projects already bid out but not yet awarded, projects already awarded, contract but not yet started, and for ongoing projects. So, naka-specify po dito kung ano yung gagawin ng mga contractors natin. So, I will go uh, uh, every, uh, in the detail for these five conditions. Projects for bidding, to yung hindi pa natin nabibid. So, in the preparation of your program of work, ABC and DUPA for infra projects, the implementing offices are authorized to utilize material prices that vary from those reflected in the quarterly issued CMPD which, when necessary, provided, however, that prices to be used and the cost estimates are supported with proper justification. Uh, ito po yung halimbawa, during the time of programming, hindi natin uh, magkaiba yung ating nasa CMPD, which was prepared by the DPWH, at saka yung actual natin sa ground, then they are allowed uh, to, to submit uh, three valid and updated canvases at gagamitin nila yung median noong mga prices noon. How about if projects already advertised but with, with pending submission of bids? The BAC, based on the recommendation of the I.O., may issue notice of postponement and initiate amendment updating of the approved ABC. Projects already bid out but not yet started. Upon recommendation of the implementing office and if the increase in price material as stated in this order costs the project subject of procurement to longer economically feasible, the BAC may invoke the reservation clause for to Section 41 of the ARR of 9184 and declare a failure of bidding. Afterwards, the, AO, the IO may cause the rebidding of the project. Next is if the projects are already awarded or contracted but not yet started. Before the implementation of the project, the contract at the instance of the contractor may be subject for termination by convenience pursuant to annex. Sorry. If warranted, the IO shall cause the takeover of the contract and negotiate with the next rank and succeeding lowest and responsive bidder. If unsuccessful, the procuring entity may initiate amending, amendment again of the ABC and can conduct the rebidding. How about the project if, on, if the project is ongoing? The contractor may file a request for price escalation or if the relief available to him under existing laws rules and regulations subject for review and recommendation of the price escalation and extraordinary claims review committee. 
po yung ating DO60. Moreover, the set measures shall be undertaken by the concerned parties involved in accordance with the guidelines and procedure stipulated in 9184. What about the uh, concern of fuel? Uh, uh, do sa ating graph kanina nakita natin na na double talaga yung pressure ng fuel natin since last year. So we we issued on May 18, 2022, the fuel and lubricant of commonly used equipment. So Pwede na natin gamitin yung dry rental rates and then we adjust the cost of fuel. So, we uh, we again uh, propose a guideline on price adjustment through a letter to uh, DPPB, to Attorney uh, Rowena Ruiz, uh, seeking uh, exemption on the price adjustment as stipulated in 91.84. Next slide. So uh, on August 12, 2022, we uh, wrote a letter to uh, Secretary Balisak and Opneda proposing new approach in evaluating price escalation requests which shall introduce a faster preparation in the computation granting of price escalation requests. So tatlo lang po yung nire-request natin. Next slide. Na uh, amendment to sa ating procedure. So we authorized the DPWS to approve the claim for price escalation at bigyan na lang natin ng kopya yung NEDA and GPPB para po mapabilis natin yung process. Remove section number 5.2.2 with regard to the effectively removing the computation for threshold K and K average. And the last is the revise the procedure and formula and section 5.3 of the escalation to be granted under the same appendix 15 of IRR, wherein we, re we remove the 5% threshold given to the contractor. So uh, the last uh, slide is uh, we have a proposed special order for the creation of committee on the proposed revision of guidelines on price escalation. Uh, who would oversee the revision of the guidelines on price escalation to streamline and expedite the process of the preparation of approval of the price escalation? I think that is all, Mr. Chair. Thank you for, for uh, this opportunity. Uh, would anyone uh, thank you, DPW, uh, DPWH uh, Assistant Secretary, for your a very enlightening presentation. Is there anyone else who would like to share their comments from our uh, from our stakeholders? Okay. Uh, there's no other. Um, since no one wants to call it, I'm very. I, I'm I'm happy to see that the uh, DPWH has taken steps to uh, to address the concern of the volatility of prices. Uh, is there any? It, has it, have you seen any effects on the uh, implementation of our projects for uh, 2022? Have you seen any, uh, has there been any projects that have been uh, cancelled or otherwise uh, delayed because of these uh, fluctuations in pricing? Mr. Chair, if I may. So, uh, for that, this point in time, we have the complete uh, list of uh, projects affected by this price increase, whether so terminated or adjusted, but there are some reports already that there were some projects that were already terminated. But we will be, I think we will be submitting to you a complete list uh, later on with regards to the effect of this uh, price increase to the implementation of infra projects of DPWH, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I uh, will request the uh, ComSec to please uh, and, uh, receive and uh, follow up this list from the DPWH. So again, um, seeing as how there are no more uh, comments or questions from our stakeholders and from my colleagues. I'd like to conclude, let me conclude by expressing my sincerest gratitude to our resource persons who participated in our inquiry today and who kindly responded to the committee's questions and shared their valuable insight. We appreciate and take note of your respective comments and positions on the resolution. We hope that this investigation, this uh, inquiry will help the government come up with a more concrete solutions to address the rising price of construction materials. I'm hoping that the discussions today will help me and my fellow legislators develop a legislative proposal to deal with this issue. If you have further materials or comments that you would like to submit, kindly send them to the committee secretariat. Uh, with the approval of my colleagues and in consideration of the time allotted for this hearing, I would like to adjourn, uh, hereby adjourn this meeting. And uh, I'd like to again thank you very much for your presence. Uh, meeting is here by adjourned.